Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you on this beautiful Sunday morning, right? It is good to look at the snow from the inside as we look at it from, you know, out there. Uh, thank you for being here this morning, and we'll begin our prayer as we begin all things. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, <coughs> the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, in our second reading today, St. Paul reminds us not to be anxious. Of course, there are so many things for us to worry and be concerned about, but with our faith and confidence in God, we know we have a God who is Emmanuel. Let us now pause for a moment to make ourselves truly present in this space as we enter into this Paschal mystery. <coughs> Lord Jesus, you have the words of everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the good shepherd who calls us each by name. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, in you we find truth and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to, to people, people of goodwill. goodwill. We, we praise pray. you. We bless, bless you. you, we adore you, we, we glorify, glorify you. you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, God heavenly King, King. O oh God, God, Almighty Father, O oh Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only begotten God, Son, Lord, Lord God, God, Lamb of God, God Son of the Father, Father you, you take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. us. You take, take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. For you alone, alone are the Holy One. You alone, alone are the Lord. You alone, alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. Christ. With, With the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit and the glory, the glory of God, God the Father. Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people, saying, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, Let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, this was well said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin, and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words, which speaks his name in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. If today you hear his voice, Harden not your hearts. If today, if today you hear his voice, harden, harden not, your, not hearts. your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If, if today, today you hear his voice, voice harden, harden not, not your, your hearts. hearts. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for he is our God, 
and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today, if today you, you hear, hear his voice, voice harden not, not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. If today, if today you hear his voice, harden not, not your, hearts. your hearts. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should be like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him, and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. It was the Sabbath, and I was sitting in the synagogue in Capernaum, and in walks this Jesus, followed by four men, four men who incidentally the day before were fishermen, but they walked away from their livelihood, their, their trade, their family, just to follow him. It intrigued me, I have to admit. Jesus walks to the center of the congregation and picks up a scroll and begins to read from the Hebrew Scriptures. But his teaching is so authoritative that it was so persuasive that it makes a deep impression on everyone who was present. This was way different from the scribes and rabbis that were used to hearing teaching in the synagogue, who basically are, are always um, giving, uh, interpreting the words of other people, uh, whether it be written or spoken. 
but not this Jesus. He seemed to need no human authorities to back up his teachings. It was almost as if when he spoke, God was speaking. Well, just as it seems to have us, all, as he seemed to have us all mesmerized, a shrill cry comes from the back of the synagogue. And up steps a man who is obviously possessed by an evil spirit. Well, here was an opportunity for Jesus. He just proved his, his authoritative way of speaking, proved his authority to somewhat. somewhat. Now he's going to have the opportunity to exercise his authority over, over unclean spirits. So he calmly confronts, silences, and expels the demon. It appears that his authority extends beyond his teachings. He even reigns over the forces of evil as well. So I confess to being very much taken in by his charisma and his words, so I decided to follow him for a while. He spoke often about love in a way that we don't normally hear spoken about in synagogues. He rated its importance as greater than the law, even. Now that's radical, because I was taught from birth that the best way for us to achieve God's favor is to follow the law specifically no matter what. He was radical to be sure. He started reading uh, from the prophet Hosea, where Hosea quoted God as saying, I, I prefer mercy to sacrifice. Once again, touching that theme of how humans treat other humans. And boy, did he ever focus on forgiveness. He boldly stated and, and reinforced with parables the fact that no matter what I did, no matter how evil the sin I committed, God would always forgive me. And not once, but countless times. Of course, to embrace that concept and, and gain that benefit from it, he says that I will have to forgive others as well in the same fashion. And not just friends and family, but everybody with whom I come in conflict. My head was swimming after a week or so of following and listening. Oh, there were dissenters at some of, our, some of the stops we made, but they were, who were kind of put off by the authoritative way in which he was teaching. However, they were greatly outnumbered by those of us who were taken in by what he, he, he had said and who were beginning to understand his message. We heard a man who spoke with such courage and wisdom that it struck with us ordinary people. Struck us, struck us with kind of an air of authenticity. But here's the thing. If I believe him, I'm going to have to change the way I live. Let's step, step away from this fictional character I just created and let's see how we can make today's gospel fit in uh, to your week ahead. You know, demonic possession was kind of an accepted fact in, in New Testament times. And whether we believe in personal demons or not, I think we all are conscious, at least at, at times, of being pulled away from God by darker forces. We all have something in it that keeps us from being the kind of person that we'd like to be. For example, there may be something within us that keeps us from praying the way we'd like to pray or keeps us from being as generous as we might want to be. Something within us that keeps us from loving the way Jesus taught us to love. We all have kind of a, an understanding of a responsibility that we have to build God's kingdom here on earth. But how much time and energy and resources do we devote to that obligation? Maybe we just refuse to forgive someone. Well, now is an excellent time to do something about it. Just as Jesus drove out the unclean spirits in today's gospel, he wants to drive out the unclean spirit that exists within us. He wants to free us from whatever is keeping us from being as prayerful, as loving, as forgiving, as generous as we want to be. The gospel, this gospel is an invitation to us to approach Jesus and let him drive out the unclean spirits that might exist within us. We have the, the courage, the confidence to confront our bad habits, 
and to ask Jesus help us to become our best selves. He wants to free us from whatever is keeping us, as I said, from being the person we want to be. Imagine, if you will, Jesus looking at you with all that love in his eyes right now, saying, come with me, follow me. Can we say, yes, Lord, you've touched my heart. I love you. Help me to do your will. Let us now together profess our faith in our God. I believe in one God, the Father, Father the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, earth of I all believe, things visible and invisible. I believe, I believe in, in one Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ the, only the only begotten God, Son of God, God born, born of the Father before all ages, ages God, God from God, God light from light, light, light through God, God from true God, God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, Father through him all things, things were made, for us men and for our salvation, salvation he came he down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, Spirit was incarnate of Virgin Mary, and became man. man. For, for our sake, sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Pilate, he suffered for death and was buried, and, and rose again on the third day, day, in, the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his, and his kingdom, kingdom will have, have no end. end. I, I believe, believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken through the prophets. I believe, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. church. I, confess I confess one baptism, baptism for forgiveness, for forgiveness of sins. I look forward, I look forward to, to the resurrection of the dead and the life, life of the world, world to come. come. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we are anxious about many things, our Father is here to listen to our worries and hear all our prayers. Let us now bring our needs and the needs of our world to our gracious God. Our response is, Lord, accept our prayer. For the church and all who proclaim the word of God with truth and humility, we pray. Lord, accept our prayer. For peace in our world and in our country, we pray. Lord, accept our prayer. For our RCIA catechumens, may we continue to support them with our prayers during their spiritual journey, we pray. Lord, accept our prayer. For our parish community, as we prayerfully reflect on our participation in the annual Catholic appeal, and how we might bring hope to the world through our prayer, service, and financial support, we pray. Lord, accept our prayer. For the swift delivery of the COVID-19 vaccine to all, we pray. Lord, accept our prayer. For all Christians, may we unite as one body of Christ, we pray. Lord, accept our prayer. For the sick, those who are recovering from surgery, coronavirus, and for all those for whom we promise to pray, we pray. Lord, accept our prayer. We remember those who have died. Rebecca Domingo, Angelina Simone, and for those who mourn the passing of a loved one, and for those who have died with no one to mourn them, we pray. Lord, accept our prayer. And for all of our own intentions. We pray. Lord, accept our prayer. God, our hope and salvation, you sent your Son to teach us the way to everlasting life hear our prayers. May we hear his voice and work to bring life to all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice of yours and mine may be acceptable to the Lord, the God Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Amen. O oh Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, your word, through your word, whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and getting for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this case we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he broke it, gave the bread to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving you thanks. Gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Cardinal Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us now together pray in the words our Savior prayed when he was here on earth. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin 
and safe from all unnecessary and useless anxieties as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And with your spirit. Let's take a moment now to offer one another a safe sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, we know you are truly present in this Eucharist. We thank you for your many gifts and blessings to each of us. We ask you to teach us how to pray, increase our faith, keep us focused on the mission you have called us, and Lord, please do not let us depart from you. Behold, Jesus, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but to only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to everlasting salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. Once again, thank you for being here this morning. Just one simple and quick announcement. Uh, many families have received the annual Catholic appeal mailing from Cardinal Supic. And next week, we will listen to the Cardinal's homily. And the theme for this year's appeal is Come, Follow Me, and Bring Hope to the World. Our parish goal for this year's appeal is $82,077. $82,077. In previous years, we have met and exceeded our goal, and I have every confidence we will do the same this year, and I continue to thank each and every one of you for your generosity and your support to St. Mary of Vernon. Um, so thank you very much for all your help. As you go back home, please drive carefully, okay? Thank you for being here. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go now in peace to glorify God with our lives. <laughs>